Hello, everybody today. Thank you for joining me here. Uh, the topic of today is um, the, about the rapture of the church. And there could be an event that happens beforehand that lets us know that it's going to happen that year. Is this 100% biblical? No, it's probably not even 25% biblical. It's something I've held. But we are going to be looking at prophecy and some other things that are biblical. But this is not going to be a Bible teaching like a lot of the other ones that I do. I try to teach straight out of the Bible. And this came because a friend of mine recently asked me, let's give a little background. Um, he's a guy that I know from church from many, many years ago. And he met my son, calling my son the Bible answer man in like children's ministries when my son was like in third grade because we homeschooled him. And he knows the Bible better than most adults, even at third grade. That's not hard. Most adults have no clue about the Bible. So anyhow, I was talking about end times prophecy and about some of the stuff going on in the world. And he thought it was a nut. Okay, a lot of people thought it was a nut. Still do, some of them, I don't care. But unlike many people, he started looking at some of the things I was saying. And he flipped out. He was like, wow, you're right. You are right. And he was just shocked. The mistake he made, and I tell everybody, if you're going to look at this stuff, you can't just spend all the time work looking at the worldly stuff. You will go nuts. You have to look at the Bible. And whatever you're looking at in the world, you need to take it back to the Bible because Yeshua is our hope. You know, his coming is our blessed hope. Okay, this is not something to get freaked out about. And the more that we see it coming, the more we should be meeting together, gathering together, and talking about these things. Anyhow, he didn't do that. He spent more time looking at all the crazy stuff going on in the world. Um, and you know, stockpiling money and all this stuff. Uh, but anyhow, he, recent called, he recently called me because, you know, the economy is not doing well. And with it not doing well, he's lost a lot of money on paper, particularly on uh, these gold certificates, which I've always thought if you're going to have gold, you need to have gold. I have a little bit of gold, a bunch of some silver. I'm more interested in food. You can eat that. Um, anyhow, so he said, when is everything going to crash? Well, I have a possible date. And we're going to be looking at um, Tisha B'Av and this, the 17th of Tammuz of the Tisha B'Av. Okay, that's what we're going to look at today. Um, understand, I'll give you a little background about it. Um, Tisha B'Av is a day that it's the saddest day of the year from the Jews. All these terrible things happen to the Jews. And it all start, and there's actually a three week period, and it's not necessarily just on that day, but around that day. But there's a three week period from the 17th of Tammuz, which is July 17th this year, to the 9th of Av. It's also known as Tisha B'Av, or 9th of Av. Av and Tammuz are months on the Jewish calendar. Again, as I said before, if you don't get the Jewish calendar, you don't get it. Okay. It's God's calendar. It's not the Jewish calendar. You need to get it. He puts his appointments on his calendar. If you're on a different calendar, you don't know when his appointments are. Plain and simple. All right. So between 17th of Tammuz and the 9th of Ab, there are three weeks. The Jews call this between the straits. This is like the saddest time of the year. This is where the phrase in dire straits comes from, to give you an idea. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Um, how, where do I want to go first? We're going to be going to open up your Bible to Revelation 4. And we're, we're going to walk through a few things um, before I get into more about the, the um, this time of the time of between the straits and why I think that there's something that could happen there beforehand. I just want to walk through a few things in the Bible to give you some perspective. Um, I started, we're going to go open up your Bible to Revelation 4. One, I suggest a paper Bible putting notes in it. Because I open up here and I'm like, I want to do these other teachings because I got all these cool notes from stuff in Revelation 4 and 5. And I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. Oh, yeah, I remember that. See, I have stuff fall out of my head all the time. I think everybody does. Some people just doesn't, that you don't remember it. You don't know it fell out. But um, the other thing is there'll be a day when there are no electronic Bibles and apps and all that uh, hopefully we're not here at that time i think that all the really bad stuff happens after tribulation or after the rapture uh, and, and during tribulation but i also believe people will be breaking into our homes to seal our bibles um 
years ago when I first started this, I started prepping. I started like getting food, survival stuff. I mean, I am prepared. Um, but then I realized that the worst of it's not going to happen until after the rapture. And I forget where the verse is, but I, I started with the uh, better be uh, better be fine feeding your fellow servants rather than beating them when the master returns. Well, the master returns at the end of tribulation, but I don't know how bad it's going to get. And I've always said, if it's a mistake, hey, okay, I'll eat my mistakes. I'm not going to talk about guns and all this other stuff. I got a little silver, a little gold. Um, you know, you can't eat bullets. You need to have food, um, water. What do you need to survive? What do you need to feed others? What do you need to share Jesus? If it gets bad before the rapture and people are having trouble eating and you're able to you know, if you can share food with them, you can share your shoe with them, plain and simple. Um, so anyhow, we're going to go to Revelation 4.1. I just want to a couple of things. Uh, Revelation 1, 2, and 3 are the letters to the church. is actually 2 and 3. And the word church appears 20 plus times. Revelation 4.1, um, the church stops. You don't see it in the rest of it, the rest of Revelation until the very end. There are no instructions to the church. Hmm. Because we're not here. Okay. Um, after these things, I looked and behold, and I'm reading Revelation 4.1, a door standing open in heaven. Rosh Hashanah is the opening of the gates, the opening of the door. We're hidden behind a door. Ezekiel, uh, Isaiah 26, 19 on. Um, remember the bridegroom that came and they have the five uh, wise and five foolish virgins. They go and they're hidden behind a door. The ones that didn't have the oil can't come and knock on the door and said, let us in. The door is huge. Which side of the door you're on is even bigger. We want to be on the other side. We don't want to be on this side. Anyhow, I saw a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet, Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets. Come up here. That's the rapture, and I will show you things that must take place after this. It's a picture of the rapture. Immediately I was in spirit and on the throne, and, and sat on the throne in heaven. One sat on the throne. Um, I think that's God. I was thinking Yeshua, but I believe it's God. And it goes on talking about it, and there are 24. Um, and around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white. Um, let me see something. Uh, disciples and patriarchs, and they have a reference of Revelation 27, 9 through 14 for that. Anyhow, so you're in heaven, and this is the rapture's happened. Who's, who is in heaven, okay? Um, Revelation 5. Okay, you know, I saw a scroll, and he's mourning nobody's worthy to open up the scroll. But see, the scrolls would be written on the inside, but on the outside it would say, who is worthy to open up the scroll? And there's seven seals. Who's opening the seals? Uh, Yeshua. You can read that, and you'll see that he's the one opening up those seven seal judgments. All right, um, go down to 8, uh, Revelation 5, 8. Now, when he had taken the scroll, this is Yeshua, and the four living creatures and 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp. And maybe that's where they get the idea we're going to be floating around in heaven on clouds with harps. No, 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 no. Seven years we're in heaven. After that, we're in Israel, because that's where Yeshua will be, and we will be with Yeshua forevermore. Um, I, um, Ezekiel 47 you get to pick. We're the, we're the strangers. I did a video on it. You get to pick where you want to live. It's kind of cool. Do you want to live near Yeshua, near Jerusalem? Do you want to, something up on a mountain? Do you want to be um, down near the Dead Sea? It's going to be some great fishing in the Dead Sea. Or do you want to be like out on the Mediterranean Sea? You know, think about it. Where do you want to be? All right, let's get back to the scripture. Um, verse 9. And they sang a new, new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe, tongue, and people, and nation. And you have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. See, reign on the earth. We're not, not going to be in heaven. We're going to be here. So who, who is it? that is redeemed by the blood of Jesus, 
from every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. That's the church. Those are the believing saints. Actually, Jew or Gentile, as long as you are saved by the blood of Yeshua. So the Messianic Jews and, and Gentiles. Us. We're, they're in heaven at this point. Not the, the first seal has not been broken. This is a pre-tribulation rapture. One of the best, best things for it. Now, a lot of Bibles translate that as many. You have redeemed many to God. You have redeemed peoples. No, no, it's us. That's what it should be. You look at the, the word and the, the, everything behind the word. It should be us. Okay. So we're in heaven. Now, the seal judgments, the first seal judgment is, the first seal judgment is, is the, um, actually, yeah, no, we're not going to read them all. The first seal judgment is the Antichrist. Comes out on a white horse, looks like Jesus, but he has a bell instead of a sword. That's the Antichrist. He, and, and you see that he's the, um, he cannot be released or revealed until the one that's restraining him is removed. Paul wrote about that. The church is, the Holy Spirit is the restrainer. How do you remove the Holy Spirit? Hmm. Um, rapture the church. Holy Spirit resides within us. You rapture the church, Antichrist can be released. Um, second seal is conflict. Everybody's beating each other, getting each other stuff, lots of battles, lots of fights. Um, the third one is a scarcity of food. They're going to be like rationing food. Um, it actually says a quarter of wheat for denarius. A denarius is like a day's wages. And three quarts of barley for denarius. Do not harm the oil and the wine. Um, oil and the wine, both Holy Spirit. I don't know. Four seal, widespread death. And I think, a, what is it, a third of the world dies? I forget, a quarter of the world, a third of the world. Uh, powered over them. And he gave power over to them for a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, by with hunger, by death, and by beasts of the earth. All right. See, to me, this is a financial collapse. Okay. In order to get a one world government and have this, um, if you if you're familiar with the Great Reset, you need to collapse everything. Even you know, build back better. You build back after a collapse. So you collapse everything, the dollar becomes worthless, and then you start a new digital currency, and you're going to have to have some sort of mark of the beast on the hand and or forehead, which is interesting. If you're familiar with the Shema in Judaism, basically the you know remembering God everywhere you go, everything you're doing, you keep them on the you're between your eyelids and on your hand, hand and forehead. Interesting. Anyhow, um. So this, this is a collapse. And then you get rid of all the countries. You go on and on and on. And this starts the, the Antichrist kingdom. This all happens very quickly. Hmm. Food, scarcity. Did you know that there's almost 100 food processing plants in the United States that have been destroyed by fire? Couple, several of them because planes crashed into them. Seriously. You look at stuff, they're destroying the economy cutting off the gas and the oil, just doing stupid stuff. I just think that we're that much closer. So I've always thought that if it's the year for the rapture, and I've got a couple videos out, I see some timelines that say this year could be the rapture. Am I saying undoubtedly this is the year for the rapture? No. Um, am I setting a date? Yeah. Is there a scripture that says, thou shalt not set dates? No. God actually encourages it. Um, he has a date. He set a date. And it's not like some day that could just happen anytime. Yes, that's the doctor in the Yes, it can happen anytime. God could wake up this morning and say, ah, the rapture is today. No, it doesn't happen that way. It's got to be on one of God's appointed times. It's got to be on Rosh Hashanah. Check the video on that. All right. So let's take a little bit more, more of a look at this ninth of Av and, and the time between the 17th of Tammuz to the ninth of Av. The ninth of Av is when the first temple fell. 17th of Tammuz is when the walls were first breached. Um, 
That's where that three-week period comes from. But the Ninth of Av supposedly goes back as far as when they sent spies into the land. You know, they'd been, you know, the, you know coming out of Egypt, they sent spies in the land. And um, they were just told to go take the land. God told them to take it. They weren't sure, so they sent some spies. They came back. All but two of the spies said, oh, oh, there's giants in the land. Oh, yeah, there really were giants in the land, yes. Giants lived here. That's another story, but that's something they try to hide from us. But there were giants in the land, so they didn't go in, and then they had to go marching around uh, uh, for 40 years. It's interesting. You know, their feet didn't grow during that, that 40 years, and they could uh, wear the same shoes for 40 years. Who's got a pair of shoes that lasted them 40 years? Wow. All right, the only two that go in were the two that said, we can do this. All right. So that's where this whole thing starts. Let me go through some of the things that have happened. And this is not a complete list. I'm just going to go through a few of the things that happened on or about Tisha B'Av. Um, the second temple fell. The Romans crushed the Bar Kokhba revolt. That was like in 135 AD. You had a revolt, and they were winning all the battles. And then some priest, or the high priest at the time, um, named some general the Messiah, the Mashiach, and all the all the. It was funny because the um, Messianic Jews at that time, because all the Jews were fighting together, but the Messianic Jews, the Jews that believed in Yeshua, said, "Uh, uh-uh, we ain't fighting for him because we know he's not the Messiah." And that's when everything got crushed. That's when everything died. That revolt failed at that point. 580, approximately 580,000 Jews were killed. Um, the Jews were expelled from England at that time, 1290 AD, from France, um, 1306, and from Spain, 1492. Yeah, that's when uh, Columbus, a Jew, got a couple ships and sailed out of France and brought <laughs> brought Jews to America. And you have the second country to be founded on God's principles. Anyhow, uh, major events with World War I started. Heinrich Himmler got formal approval for the final solution to kill off all the Jews. Uh, there was mass deportation from Warsaw to prison camps during that on that day, another year. Most recently, in 2005, the, um, when Israel traded land for no peace, all the Jews had to be out of the Gaza Strip. And that one's real interesting because the first war um, that will occur is Salt 83, and it gives a list of the combatants in terms of the ites, the peoples, you know, like the hit. Hittites, the termites, the parasites. But then it mentions Philistia, the land of the Philistines. Well, that's the Gaza Strip. All right. So all these things happen at that time. Um, I'm convinced. I mean, I believe, and this is not biblical. Don't say, well, Dave said this had to happen. This does not have to happen. I, I believe that something will happen during that time, and this year it's between July 17th and August 6th. It could be Israel and Iran starting a war. It could be um, um, it could be a famine. It, there's a, lots of things it could be. It could be that's when the economy start to collapse. Anything. But I, I expect to see something biblical happen, something that's going to be centered around Israel happen at that time. Um, Real quick, just talking about like, you know, I know a lot of people are out there looking at, you know, stuff. You need food. You need water. You need to be able to share it with your neighbors. You have to look at your neighborhood, what's going to go on. You know, imagine that the average household has three days worth of food. If this stuff hits, and I'm not here trying to sell you gold or trying to sell you food. I don't do that. I have my own. I think the answer is chickens. Yes, chickens. I have chickens. They lay eggs. I've actually pictured myself like digging into the ground so that my chickens can find worms. Silly, 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 but we'll see what happens. Um, but I want to throw a couple of a scripture out to you um, real quick. Go to Ezekiel 719, just to give you an idea of what happens. 
Ezekiel 7, 19. And this is talking about the last days. And we've seen this in countries that where their, where their finances have totally collapsed. They will throw their silver into the streets and their gold will be like refuse. Their silver and their gold will not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They will not satisfy their souls nor fill their stomachs because it became their stumbling block for inequity. You don't want to have stumbling blocks before you. Okay. You can't trust in wealth. You can't trust in this stockpile of gold and silver like my friend was freaking out because he lost this, all this stuff on paper. That's not what it's about. Okay, I would say have food because the gold and the silver doesn't fill your stomachs. But you need the word of God. You need to be saved. Most of the people that think they're saved are not. Most of the people that think they're going to be raptured are not. That's the scary point. Turn with me to Proverbs 11, 14. Proverbs 11, 14. And I may have this one. Let me see something. My apologies. Rather than going to Proverbs, let's go to Psalms 37. <clears throat> I wrote down that scripture. I looked at it. I'm like, that's not it. I'm not sure where I wanted to go. But this is going to be the best verse for us to finish up on tonight, to, to contemplate with, to think about, to dwell on. A great summary to this. Psalm 37, 25. All right. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I have never, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. For he is merciful and he lends all his descendants are blessed. And he lends and all his descendants are blessed. In other words, if you're in, if you are in, if you are righteous. If you are right standing, you will not be forsaken. You're not, your kids aren't going to be out there begging for bread. You're not going to be in tribulation. Okay? Your faith goes into Yeshua. Now, find out, make sure that you're saved. Raising your hand at a, uh, in a church service and having somebody say, welcome to the family of God, ain't it? You need to become a disciple. You need to follow Jesus. You need to learn from Jesus. What did Jesus teach? Online people say, well, it's not works. No, it's not. You get saved by salvation is, is through faith by grace. But once you're saved, hmm, you need to start looking at what Jesus told you to do. Um, check out my teaching on lawlessness, a terminal condition. Check out my teaching about who's not going to be there. Um, I don't know the dividing line. That's not my job. But I just read scripture, and I know what scripture is saying to me. Anyhow, God bless. Thank you so much. If you got this far in the video, I appreciate it. Like it. Share it. Um, follow me so you get you, so you get notifications when I put stuff up. Somebody is. Every time I put it, every time I, I load something up to, uh, every time I load something up to, YouTube, I've already got a view by the time I get there. That's kind of cool. God bless you. Shalom in Maranatha.